us to try to overstand something. See, it's a little bit of a, a quirk in the word. Instead of saying understand, you say overstand. And I don't know if it's ever been thought through that that's not really the best way to approach it. Because if one just overstands, then you're missing everything that's underneath what you're looking at. To just simply overstand means that you're acting like this demigod this satanic ruler that has imprisoned us. That's the one who just overstands everything. He stands over us. And he rules from on high. And doesn't have to deal with any of the consequences of his actions, his choices, the system's ideas. It's just this God who sits on high... And overstands, rules over one. And all these types that are judgmental, they bring forth their petty judgments. They are the overstanders. That's all they do. They just stand above you and point a finger and judge you. They're not vulnerable. They're not offering a damn thing to anyone All they have to offer is their petty little judgment. The end, that's it. They overstand completely and they're flawless. They're absolutely perfect in their assessments, in their judgments. They're the flawless ones. They're God in their opinion. And so much such as myself, a real heart. Well, I'm the one to have their finger be pointed at. To be judged. To literally be gaslighted. Just treated like a piece of trash, a piece of garbage. Someone to just be abusive towards. That's all I'm good for. Thus the tyrannical ruler overstands and only overstands. He sits on his bench as the judge. And then asks you. Asks you, do you understand? See, I'm the one who overstands as the judge. And do you understand? Do you get it? I'm the great ruler. I'm flawless. I sit up on high and I get to point my finger at you, the petty slave. So, we have a lot of these truthers, if you will. That say, one needs, we need to overstand things. You know, have you actually went into it? Is that really how you want to perceive things? That, that's, that's the correct approach. You just overstand. You sit on high. Like the artificial eye on the top of the, the pyramid. Never truly understanding all those that you have stomped on. Who sit under your foot of rule. You can't understand them. They're they're beneath you. See, I'm I'm speaking to the fact that I understand. And that's my approach. I want to understand. And yeah, I'm in the trenches. I'm with the the broken hearted who have hit rock bottom. Absolutely the very bottom, the very foundation of the whole thing. The only place where you can understand. The the darkest place, if you will. Feeling like there's no one out there who gets you, who understands you. There's just a bunch of overstanders. Just a bunch of enlightened ones, if you will, who are seating themselves up on cloud nine in their zen out Buddhist enlightened state, wearing their fancy robes, putting on their seminar, selling their wares for a thousand dollars for a necklace or whatever the hell that, you know, these enlightened gurus and truthers and the overstanders are doing trying to deliver that message just you need to overstand 
And I'm obviously saying, well, if I just overstand, how can I understand? Then I'm like that Satan demigod just sitting on high on my high horse, dictating and judging as if I'm just this flawless entity who's never been put through the ringer, put through the worst, and just saying, you can listen to me because I'm perfect. Well, I'm not perfect by any means. The fact of the matter, the truth is, as I've said, I'm a slave in this system, no different than anyone else. I am not free. I'm not pretending that I am. I've never said that. I've been through a lot of things, just as many of you have. All of you real hearts certainly have been through a lot. You have to have. That's that's the suffering of being a slave in this system. And to different degrees, you know, everyone gets a different cut of cards, their, their fate that's dealt to them in each incarnation, if you will, is a little different. So maybe you got a better hand this time around. And so things maybe aren't as bad. And a lot of you have gotten a bum deal, uh, quite actually. So things are a lot rougher. And, you know, it's opened your eyes and revealed much about what this place truly is. So it became, oddly enough, a type of fortune to be dealt a bad hand because it became easier to see that you're not in a good place. You get to figure out, you've gotten to figure out a lot more easily where exactly you are as opposed to those who have gotten a better hand, lived a better lifestyle and were more easily duped and convinced into believing in all of the constructs here and thinking that everything is hunky-dory and you can just move towards some pseudo-enlightened state, new age mentality of positivity and everything is just all sunshine and rainbows as I've said. So I've gone into that extensively. No, I don't want to overstand. Overstand is just looking on the surface of the ocean, so to speak. Sure, I can look at the surface. Yeah, Maybe looking at the surface of the ocean can be beautiful if we're just going to relate it to that example. But what's underneath? Go back to the parable, obviously, diving into the ocean. Well, the only way I could comprehend what's in the ocean is to go into it. And the deeper I go, the more I understand. But if I just overstand and just look at the surface, I'm not I'm not getting anything. What's going on underneath there? could be all kinds of dark and demented shit happening. But if I just sit on high and point my finger of judgment at anyone who might be coming up to the surface and screaming for help, saying, hey, who are you screaming for help? And they're shouting, help, it's dark and demented down here, I need help. And then the person's just overstanding the rule of looking at the surface. Get back down there. You're disturbing my enlightened peace. I'm the one who overstands everything, and I'm perfect. I sit on high. Get back down into that ocean and quit disturbing my quiet time. See, that's one who overstands and remains enlightened and wears their robes and sits in comfort 24-7, waits for their sales from their DVD instructional seminar to come in from their thousands of followers that they're selling to. So no, thank you. I'm going to stay with understanding things. Rolling in the trenches of this very real war. I'm okay with that. I'm real. I'm not someone who sits on the top of a pyramid believing in hierarchies. No, I'll go have a conversation with those that this society detests and calls bums and calls the worst of society, the lazy. 
Oh, you're just lazy. You don't want to work. That's why you're a bum and you're homeless and you're you're addicted to drugs now. And it's just the outcasts, the ones who have been dealt a bad hand, you know, suffered things that we can't imagine. Literally, these people born into homes of physical abuse from their parents just suffering things that people don't care to think about don't care to imagine are going on everywhere all the time and then because of that abuse that these individuals have suffered because this system is so sick with its overstander its demented prison master ruler that just stands over everyone. Well, most people don't care about these individuals that have suffered much and the consequences of everything that they've gone through, the abuse that they've suffered. And, of course, it leads them down dark paths. You know, choices that they've made because they didn't receive the love that's so necessary, the the care, the attention. That's a necessity for all of us. For all of us to receive in our hearts. No, instead, what they received in this system was abuse and judgment. Finger pointers from on high. And then the more they suffered, the more they got abused, the more judged they got by the same damn system that abused them in the first place. And that just became the endless circle of abuse that just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then, yeah, just to top it off now in the the New Age Guru Enlightenment era, anyone seeking truth is told, you need to overstand everything. And that's, in my view, just the biggest joke of it all. If you just sit on high, you're not going to see all the destruction that's happened underneath. And there's a hell of a lot of destruction, a hell of a lot of abuse, a hell of a lot of torment and torture. Cuts and divisions. And so, yeah, I mean, one, you can can just listen to these overstanders and think everything is just fine. As I said, everything is just going to trundle along in the same repetitive pattern, the same fashion as it has for so long in one's view. And it's just a journey. Nothing means anything except for what you want it to. You create your own reality. You create your own perceptions. You can ignore all the bad things it just doesn't exist if you just pretend it's not there see it all just magically disappears just based on your own personal vibration these are the sentiments of evil as if someone's getting physically abused and you walk by and you see that abuse just change your vibration change your internal vibration and that abuse just does it disappears it's just magically not there and that's just The biggest bunch of bullshit ever. No, none of these terrible things just go away because you just imagined it away. All the pain that's caused, that's been caused, for way too long to mention, to to even fathom, really. You think that just disappears because you've changed your internal vibration that's the that's such a joke you're taking a page or pages out of the book of satan's overstanding system and it sounds see on the surface it sounds nice yeah i need to overstand yeah it's way better than understanding and you get the the ones who you know have looked into the the sovereign citizen movement and so much of it is about going into court and 
The judge will say, do you understand? No, judge. I don't understand. I know what you're saying, what you're trying to do to me. And of course, that's been the ruse. It just wants you as the new sovereign citizen to take a hubristic stance. And then you think you're better now. You see, it's just a role reversal. Now you're the better one. You're the one who has hubris. You overstand. See, it's just a a switch of the hierarchy. And that's been the point. It's not about freeing you, the whole sovereign citizen movement. It's just been another ruse in a different kind of way. Sure, there was things to learn from it. Yeah, there there was probably a lot to learn from it. And I I took a lot myself from what people found out, what they extrapolated. But at the end of the day, it really didn't set anyone truly free. And so much of it was deceptive in that regard too. It was about creating a lot of hubris within oneself. So these are the points to keep in in check. Because that's what it's about. What have I been shown and have I remained in check with what I've been shown? Or was it another deception to try to make me feel like I was better than everyone in some way? And that's what the whole overstanding phenomenon is about. So when you understand, you realize, no, I'm not better than anyone. I'm... I'm in the trenches. I've I've hit rock bottom. Now I'm actually wondering, is there anyone else down here with me? Not only am I not better, I see that I'm probably at the lowest, lowest point, and there's no one else here. So it's the exact opposite. Everyone else is better, or in a better situation, in fact. I'm at the lowest It's the exact opposite of hubris. Then one truly understands, or at least is beginning to go in the direction of that understanding. So yeah, I I do, I understand, and I am not scared or ashamed to say that. I'm not ashamed to say that I'm stuck as a slave in a slave system i'm not going to pretend i'm free yay i'm free like as if someone who has you know some money in a bank account who believes they're free because they have some money you know look i have some money i'm so free you know nobody who has money is free money is not freedom having a a title of some kind is not freedom Everything of this place, of this system, of these wrong ideas is not freedom. It's just enslavement in different ways. It's different degrees and different styles of enslavement. Which part of the system are you serving at this particular time? But it doesn't want anyone to see it that way. It just wants you to chase a lottery win, win a bunch of money, and then... You call that freedom in some way or chase a retirement at the age of 55 or 65 and now you're free, now you're retired. These pseudo forms of freedom, these absolute fallacy illusions of freedom which is not any type of freedom whatsoever. It's all going to be taken away in short order no matter what. Let's say you hit retirement, you're 65. Well, you've poured the intensity of your energy into your career. The bulk of your best energy of your youth has been put into that career. Your best years are gone. And now you're retired and a lot of people, they end up just getting some disease and dying right away. Like they retire at 65 and die at 66. So yeah, you were free in your retirement for less than a year and then you died. And even that last year, it wasn't even that great of a year because you were sick and dying. And the best of your energy was gone because 
all that youth was wasted in that career, that slave career for the system to make money because it forces everyone to do that in some way or the other. Even the idea of, have you tried trading trading or bartering? It's just the same damn thing. Well, you need items to trade or barter. You need land. Well, it forces you to get titles, which you need money for, and so on. It just all wraps back around the same thing. So and if you don't have access to those resources, then how are you going to trade and barter? What are you starting from? And it forces you to start by using its monetary system. So it's the same thing. So that's, that's, that's no solution at all. That's another pseudo solution. And I, you know, I get what, you know, people, they, what, when you suggest these things, you know, it's, I've looked into this for so many years as well. You know, what, what are the ways, what are the solutions? What can we do? Sure. You know, a lot of these things we're we've been trying our best, a lot of us, you know, to find any way, anything to set us free. But it all just wraps back around onto the same system in some form or another. That's the whole problem of it. And no matter what, even if we escape, let's say we, you start your own commune, your own little community. Let's go into that. Okay, now you're separate. You think you're going to be left alone for very long? Another thing I haven't got into and I'm going to, look what happened to the First Nations. The First Nations in North America. Look how long they were left alone and assimilated and just everything about them just absolutely ravaged and destroyed just like the earth. So the First Nations, for time immemorial, treated the earth as sacred. And look what the system did to them. So those who think the solution is to set up some commune, some community, and just try to live freely that way, do you think the system is going to leave you alone? Look what it did to the First Nations and how well it left them alone. Oh, you're on land that we actually require now to extrapolate more resources. You're going to have to leave. Yeah, it'll, they'll send the, the entire military, like the whole United States military against you and your commune of 50 people. And see, I'll, I'll point that out and, oh, it's so negative, you can't think that way. And it's just, that's just the reality. Look, again, I'll repeat it because the filters are strong. Look what happened to the First Nations. Anyone who hasn't studied the First Nations at all, you've, you've missed the most important study in your truth-seeking journey. The most important. If you haven't even touched on that subject... I don't even know what to say. You might as well start from scratch. I'm not even joking. Everything about those people has been torn down to shreds. There's there's like a, a fraction of a pittance of what the First Nations were that still remains intact. Like a fraction of a pittance. It's like a little scrap, a crumb of what they formerly used to be, of what they represented, which was the heart and the spirit and the sacredness of the heart and the earth, Mother Earth, our true creator, our true creators, which is the eternal father and mother, as I've said. People don't like that. They want to conceptualize that it's just God, singular, just just the father side. Well... What do you think brings forth all the life? You're forgetting, you're forgetting about our mother. All that life coming from the earth? Who do you think is bringing all that forth? So the First Nations realized that, and yeah, and they, call, they called the earth Mother Earth. Exactly correctly. So anyone who hasn't looked into anything of the First Nations, I mean, especially if you're in Canada, you know, in the United States too, really all of North America, look into the residential school system. Look what, look what they went through just with that through most of the 1900s. And I mean, pretty much all of the 1900s. 
You want to understand abuse? Or do you want to just overstand it? That's the question. And of course, yeah, the the overstanders, the abusers, the real gaslighters, the AIs that are relentless here and on other real hearts, you know, that are delivering messages as well. You know, it's just obvious. They're just abusive. They're just pointing their fingers of judgment. And that's all they have to offer. And that's all they ever will have to offer. They've given nothing of themselves and they never will. They're just going to abuse, abuse, abuse. The end. So those... That's that's really one of the most important points today I wanted to bring up is is the overstanding of things. And I had mentioned yesterday I was going to talk a little bit about our inheritance and what that really means and there's a lot to it. And to understand it is is to really go into what you've already been doing with your life, with your energy, right? As I said, you know, most of a person's inheritance was the belief in, you know, the freedom that they'd attain at retirement by how much energy they poured into their career and building up a big bank account and so on, right? That's what people have done with their inheritance, which, yes, is linked with time, but it's most importantly linked with your heart, which is your light, what people typically call their energy. It's not just energy, it's it's a lot more than that. It's your spirit, it's your heart, it's your light. And each of us real hearts have been given an inheritance. You've been given a small piece of heaven. That's the fact. You have a real heart, the spirit of the heart, You've been given a small piece of heaven inside of you. Now, what are you going to do with that piece? That's when you first entered into this realm as one of the the cut pieces, if you will, of the kingdom of heaven. You have a small piece of that heaven, that the true kingdom. And the question right from the beginning of your life And it's the same question that remains through your life is, what are you going to do with your inheritance? Are you going to spend it wisely? Or are you going to be reckless with it? It's the question. I referred to the aspect of these devices, these technological tools of this system, right? And there's two ways to utilize them. One was completely wasteful, just thinking them of them as entertainment devices. You could just vacuum away your time, just being siphoned away by watching just a bunch of garbage or just doing meaningless, pointless things with them. Or you could have seen them correctly as a means to gain more knowledge and awareness towards the truth, finding out more about where you are, what's your place in this world, what, where are, what is this world, what is this reality? Is there anyone out there who's been searching like I have, who may have some key points of enlightenment? So yeah, the internet is a tool. Have you utilized it correctly? You know, have you spent your time, which is your inheritance, in that regard wisely while utilizing these other tools of the system in a more correct way? And of course, yeah, perhaps I I obviously am speaking to the choir, as it said, for the most part. But even the choir hasn't heard all of these points or thought through them. This is why I talk now. I'm not listening to the judges. I don't care about the artificial judges at all. 
They are the overstanders who sit on high and point their finger. Who cares about them? They're always going to be there. I think that's obvious. To the real hearts, that should be obvious. Like, look at them. They're relentless in their judgments and their gaslighting. We can properly just ignore them now. Don't even comment to them. Like, literally just ignore them. They don't deserve a fraction of your inheritance. Not a pittance of it. Don't give it to them. Don't give them a pittance more of your inheritance. At all. So, the choice, obviously, being with these tools that we've been presented, these technological tools, well, you know, sometimes, yeah, everyone's got caught in utilizing them for the wrong reasons, just to zone out and be entertained by them. But many of us on here listening have said, you know what, geez, this is, this is pretty powerful, this stuff. You know, it, it, it can really be utilized as a force for, for some good here. Obviously, in, in the aspect of research, I'm, I'm definitely going to utilize it for that. I'm not, I'm not going to waste this opportunity that's obviously been pre- presented. You know, there was no internet uh, prior to uh, the early 90s, let's say, whenever it came out. And people had to do different things to, to do their research. You know, they had to read books, or they had to go to the library, they had to go to bookstores, you know, just talk to others. You know, it was a lot harder to find things out. And so the internet, the, the one benefit has been for seeking out truth, but now it's just a flood of just information, uh, just garbage, you know, Finding anything good now is truly searching for the needle in the haystack. It's no different than the warning given by Huxley in Brave New World that it's going to be an excess of everything, you know, as opposed to uh, the 1984 version of George Orwell where there's going to be a lack of everything. So, again, between those two stories, those two books, it created a dichotomy, uh, two parallels. So one society, there's a lack of everything and there's no information and any information is just tightly controlled, which is still the case, obviously. But what we have now with the internet is more parallel in our reality with Brave New World. There's just way too damn much of everything and it's just mostly piles upon piles of garbage nonsense. So now try to sift through all of that and try to find anything that's legitimate or completely truthful or helpful, insightful, actually. And that's, that's essentially the, the near impossibility. And as the years have gone on, it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. So there, there lies the problem. And those who have been doing research for a while have seen that have seen that it's just become just this monstrosity of endless streams of content. And that's why I say what's actually worth even looking at anymore. Just trying to to sift through the mountain heaps of garbage that's out there. Just so many, so many entities, people just tossing their viewpoint into that sea of chaos. But who who's really done the work inside and has found the truth and how many are just still just blind? Again, blind leading the blind. And a lot of it seemingly is, is worth looking at on the surface. But again, that goes into the construct of those who overstand things, you know, and are delivering content from that vantage point, that viewpoint, the new age guru enlightenment topography of this reality that we find ourselves in. But yeah, for a little while, you know, there was kind of 
like this happy medium point where if you ask the right questions and you did that intensively enough and sincerely enough, you were going to eventually find those who were truly insightful that had put in that work and the effort and it was a lot easier to come across and now not so much, not nearly so much. So that's the other problem, as I said, you know, it's a, a more of a brave new world type scenario at this very moment. But I wanted to bring that up, you know, it's it's been important and that's been screened out as well. Those who have spent their inheritance wisely in that regard, not just your time, but your spirit, your life force into that search and utilizing these tools in the correct manner for that search these opportunities that have been presented to you all part of the inheritance because these tools obviously utilize resources from the earth precious resources and an enormity of pain in the extracting of them like people just don't conceptualize this like look at the mining processes and just the horrendous things done to the earth just to mine the resources to create a computer. And people think it's just meaningless. You know, it didn't cause any damage or pain to anyone else. Look at the wetlands that get destroyed because of these mines. Like it's just such ignorance to say that it doesn't affect anything or anyone else. You know how much life gets destroyed because of a mine? It's unbelievable. If you haven't done any research into that at all, then perhaps look into into that to gather a little more insight into the immensity of pain that's been done, the damage to the earth to create these devices that these judges on high say have no effect And that this whole system can continue in the same direction indefinitely. If one wants to open their eyes a little more, then start looking into these things too. I wonder how much care and attention has been done in that regard for anyone. That's that's my question. How many have really cared enough to even look into that? Thinking that the destruction of wetlands is no big deal. It's unbelievable, the damage, and irreparable. Most of this stuff, there is no reclamation that can happen. It's impossible. You can't reclaim these these places, these sacred places. It's done. It's destroyed. That's it, the end. There's no coming back from that. It's like the old growth forests, you know, in places like British Columbia, as an example. You know, there's there's so little left now. Lots of places in the States, you know, that have old growth forests and there's such a small percentage left. And that's that. It's not coming back. You don't just send in the tree planters and say, oh, plant some old growth forest in place of where all these old growth forest trees were chopped down. Well, no, that's not going to get done. And that has become a part of the collective responsibility of the inheritance because the whole earth is the inheritance. That's the truth. And everyone's been okay. See, it's all greed. It's what everyone's agreed to. It's another tell in the words. Oh, you've all agreed to this system and the way it's doing things because of the ideas of greed. You might be able to make a little bit more money if that forest is chopped down. Think of all the money that you can put into your bank account jobs that can be created just go ahead and destroy the inheritance because of this idea of profit and so the inheritance is not spent wisely in the slightest not in the slightest it's not even spent it's just absolutely annihilated and the collective responsibility to be stewards of this place well that's just the joke there is no stewardship of this place it's just a clown circus shit show destroying it 
and those overstanders on high just point the finger of judgment towards individuals such as myself as if it doesn't matter at all so yeah go ahead and you know as an individual if one wants and listen to those overstanders who just say your inheritance is meaningless there's no meaning behind it there is no inheritance it's just a little experience and death will set you free you only get one inheritance you only get one earth it wants you to think that there's endless earths endless inheritances and that's the biggest lie of them all no there isn't endless inheritances one earth that's it and look what's being done to it because of greed because of what is agreed to in terms of the wrong vision just to toss some pieces of paper some monetary units into some bullshit account that's going to disappear because that's what death does it takes it all away anyways yeah you could have built up the biggest freaking amount of numbers ever and then death hits and it's all gone instantaneously anyways so yeah because you know you thought oh just who cares destroy the old growth we can send it to our mills and and make a few bucks and the consequences well not in my lifetime the whole not in my lifetime or mentality i won't have to deal with it in my lifetime the the consequences and what a shitty attitude yeah just pass it to the next generation who cares let somebody else deal with it let the destruction of a fort mcmurray you know be passed on to the gen- generations to come believe in these sadistic corporations and their bullshit lying talk about reclamation plans which will never happen just causing cancer in the northern communities and they don't give a shit just just keep stacking those piles of money. Ah, oh, the look at the beautiful, beautiful money. All we have to do is keep destroying the earth and we keep getting more money. It's it's so beautiful. And the overstanders again, they they point at me with their judgmental finger. But never, ever, 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 ever talking about the real problem the real problems which is the wrong vision they out themselves in that way over and over and over and over again so really pay attention to that too paying attention to the correct things is also part of one's inheritance absolutely it is it's your vision it's what seeing from the heart is to see correctly and seeing correctly is also paying attention to those who don't see correctly or refuse to they are the system players what i have correctly called the defenders of hell that's what they are they're the defenders of death and death's vision they love satan they love satan literally they don't want to have a different god of any kind that has the truth our true creators they're not they're not going to want to walk towards the kingdom of heaven they love this vision of death and destructiveness and greed and so that's that's their greed they want everyone with a real heart to bow down at that altar too and so that's why I talk about the inheritance and the immense importance of comprehending and understanding what it means. And this is just the beginning of understanding what the inheritance means. And where one 
really, really hasn't been focusing very much attention on, you know, at all in terms of the search. It's been on so much, many of the problems that some of which I mentioned yesterday that many are aware of, the, the conspiracy side of things. That's only one element. And that's why I say, you know, those who are searching for a solution for to, to be free of this system, and I, I bring up that point. It is a good comparison. You want to set up your own communities, and I see there's some of you that want to do that. And again, you know, on the surface, yeah, it seems like the right thing to do, but you can't run away from this system. You can't just go into this bush or buy a piece of land and think that you're going to be left alone. That's why you needed to do your research on what happened to the First Nations to understand why you won't be left alone. And again, you're not going to be able to just vibrate positivity and wish that away and think that you're going to, your community and your situation is going to be the exception to the rule. Just because you're listening to these new age enlightened gurus that say you can just manifest it away. That's not how it works. Whatsoever. None of that is the truth. All of that is just a bunch of garbage that it wants to feed you because it's convenient for it. So when one understands the immense importance of their inheritance, what they have received within themselves, that piece of heaven that is within each real heart, you cherish that and you spend it wisely. This ties into what I meant by you have a limited amount of time you have today as an example, and once it goes away, you don't get it back. I hope you spent it wisely. Because once it's gone, it's gone. That's it. It's done. Your time is way more valuable than you can imagine. And of course, this commerce system says, no, nah, you're... You're worth 15 bucks an hour or 30 bucks an hour or whatever the hell. That's it. This scrap, this little pittance, that's what you're going to value my absolutely priceless inheritance at. And people agree to that. That's what's agreed to. Yeah, you get your little stack of money at the end, your paycheck. Of course, check means king. See, that's the king that you bow down to. The one that overstands and you're under its thumb of rule. And you say, well, yeah, I'll agree to that. And of course, yeah, it's just a slave system. So it forces this idea upon us. And there's no escape. And anyone who's trying to, like I, that's why I give the community example, you can try to escape, but it won't let you. So there's got to be another way. There's a different way. Or potentially an opportunity of an eternity. And of course we come full circle again with that. So. That's the beginning of. What the inheritance. Is and. I wanted to give something to start with. In that regard. And there's, I'm going to talk a lot more about that too because it's, it's incredibly important. And some of the other points that I just started touching on in, in what I've talked about here today. So that's what I have for everyone. I uh, will obviously continue to do my best to just keep bringing messages forth. And I hope this finds everyone doing as best as can be. We'll talk again soon. Take care.